Hey, today we are reading chapter seven of Fourth Grade Rats by Jerry Spinelli. If you remember in chapter six, um, the big ending was that Joe, Joey and Suds got in a big fight. Um, it all started when Joey kind of became a man, as Suds put it, when he had a bee on his arm and he was attracting a lot of attention because all the girls were like, oh my gosh, how do you do that? I can't believe it. And then um, what was it? Gerald Willis actually pushed his arm and the bee ran away and then came back and stung Joey. So people were even more impressed then because Joey didn't scream, he didn't cry, he didn't complain. He was just like, yeah, no big deal. He was trying to act really cool. And all the girls started swooning over him. And what really upset Stussuds was that Judy Billings was really flirting with him and saying, oh, you're so strong and actually told Joey she liked him. And as we know, Suds has been madly in love with Judy Billings, it sounds like for a pretty long time. We know at least in fourth grade, and I think even in third grade, um, maybe even longer. So Suds was, you know, jealous, obviously, and also disappointed in Joey that Joey didn't tell Judy that he didn't like Judy, because Suds kind of expected Joey to do that as his friend. So the very last um, couple lines of chapter six, we saw Joey and Suds talking, and Joey said to Suds, if you look at the very bottom here, after a while he called Suds, it's Friday, stay over at my house tonight. And Suds said, never. So kind of a suspenseful ending to see if they were gonna make up or if they were in a fight. Now, I'm interested to see what you guys think about the beginning of this chapter where they start off. Chapter seven is called Trashing Joey's Room. When I got to Joey's house that night, his room looked the same as always, but not for long. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm shocked. I can't believe that Suds went to Joey's house after saying never, I'll never go to your house. It's unbelievable. Anyways, let's keep going. Been working on myself so far, he said. Now it's my room's turn. What do you think Joey means like that? I've been working on myself so far, now it's my room's turn. Based on the title, it doesn't sound so good. First, we put up posters, Rambo, Hulk, Hulk Hogan, and one showing his big, nasty robot type dude. Except you could see whiskers and a long tail sticking out. It was called Robo Rat. He checked out the walls. Good, now the rest. He started with his bookshelf. He pulled out four or five volumes from his encyclopedia and threw them on the floor. Then he tossed out a couple comic books and a National Geographic. He opened every drawer in his dresser, dresser and he flipped out stuff from each one. Socks, underwear, shirts, they landed all over. He kicked his water basket over, his waste basket over, sorry. He dragged his dirty clothes hamper from the closet and dumped it on the floor. He charged into his desk. Pencils and papers and rubber bands went flying. About the only thing he didn't do was spit. Why do you think that Joey is doing this? That's my first question for you. And then my second question for you is, do you really think that Suds is over this? What do you think's going on here? Do you think that he's forgiven Joey? Do you think he's still upset but still wanted to see him? Do you think it's been a while maybe and we just don't know yet and they're gonna explain that later in the chapter? What do you think's going on here? Because there's obviously something going on because in the, la in the last chapter, Sud said, no, I'll never come to your house. And now he's at his house. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. And then my second question would be, why do you think Joey is doing this to his room? I mean, it's his room. Why is he destroying it? By now, you could hardly see the floor. He stood in the middle, turning, nodding, smiling. Yeah, now it's my room. I just sat on the bed, stunned. Until then, Joey Patterson's room had been the neatest room I had ever seen. So why do you think Joey suddenly is destroying his room when it used to always be really neat? What do you think that's about? Now it's my room. What does he mean by that? Here's a picture of him throwing everything all over his room. And he wasn't done. We ordered a pizza, and when he got down to the crust of each slice, he tossed it over his shoulder. One landed in his underwear drawer. The pizza box, he flipped like a Frisbee against the wall. After that, we had fudging, 
fudgesicles, and peanut shoots. The wrappers, at least his wrappers, went onto the floor. He took a wad of bubble gum from his mouth and winged it against his dresser mirror. It stuck. I guess he couldn't think of anything else to do to his room because he turned back to himself. He pulled something from his pocket. It looked like a little notepad. What is it? I asked him. What do you think Joey has in his pocket? Do you think it's a notepad? Or do you think it's something else? What do you think he's gonna do with it? He grinned, tattoos, oh no. Into the bathroom we went, he tore off four and wetted them. So these aren't real tattoos, obviously, they're the kind you wet and you put on your skin with like a sponge and then they last for a couple of days. Pretty soon he was tattooed on the chest, skull and crossbones, that's what this picture is. Both arms, a cobra and a mongoose, and rear end. If you can read this, you're too close. Oh my gosh, that's silly. You know they're not gonna last, I told him. They'll last till I get back, He's, till I get a bath, he said. And I ain't getting a bath except once a month from now on. Ew, I pinched my nose. Oh, great, man, do you have to smell like a rat too? As we left the bathroom, we bumped into his mother. I saw your room, she said. What are you doing in there, training elephants? Well, she looked at Joey. As soon as Suds leaves tomorrow, you see that it gets cleaned up. Uh-oh, I thought. Is this it? Will he practice what he preaches? Do you guys know what that means? Practice what he preaches. So think about the words. Does he practice or do something regularly? Practice what he preaches. Preaches means um, to say, and a lot of times when you're preaching, you're asking people to do something. So if I was um, practicing what I preach, maybe I would be telling you guys, you need to do your homework every night and you need to write in complete sentences and you need to capitalize the first letter of your sentence and you need to put a period at the end of your sentence. If I practice what I preached, so that's what I preached. And if I practice it, that would mean I'm also doing all my work and I'm also writing complete sentences with periods and capitals. If I didn't practice what I preached, I maybe wouldn't finish all my work. I wouldn't be grading your work. I wouldn't be having your assignments up in time. And then my sentences I was writing would be not real sentences. They wouldn't make sense. They don't have periods. You would be like, Miss White, you tell us to write in full sentences every day. What's this about? You're not even gonna write in a full sentence. You forgot a period. That would be me not practicing what I preach. If I did practice what I preached, that would mean I'm doing the same thing I'm asking of you guys. So here they're saying, does Joey practice what he preaches? He tells me not to listen to my mom every day. He's always saying, Suds, say no to your mom. That's one of the things he said um, two chapters ago. So Suds is wondering, is he going to do what he's telling me to do? Is he gonna say no to his mom? Or is he just telling me to do that? So we'll see, does he practice what he preaches? Joey slouched against the bathroom doorway. He looked off down the hall. Nah, I don't think so. So there you go. I guess Joey does practice what he preaches, right? He just said no to his mom. The question is, how far is he going to take it, right? Is he going to keep saying no? Or do you think his mom is going to convince him to clean his room? What do you think? Mrs. Peterson blinked. You don't think what? I don't think I'm gonna clean it up. I like it that way. I took a step back. If Mrs. Peterson was about to get violent, I wanted to be out of range. What would your parents do if you said that to them? <laughs> Joey looked at the floor. I looked at Mrs. Peterson. Mrs. Peterson glared daggers at Joey, gave him the mom look. This lasted for about three hours. Then all of a sudden it was over. Mrs. Peterson gave a little shrug and a smile and said, okay, and walked away. What do you think just happened there? Do you think it was really three hours? Or do you think it just felt like three hours? I think it probably just felt like three hours. You know when you're in the awkward moment, it feels like every second feels like a long time. And do you think Joey's mom is cool with this? Do you think she's okay with that? Why do you think she just said okay and shrugged her shoulders? Because we know she was upset because glared daggers, that means like 
you know, when you're in class and your teacher looks at you like, you better stop talking right now. That's kind of what they're saying. So what do you think happened there with Joey's mom? Do you think she's upset or do you think she's like, oh, all right, eh, he'll be a kid, that's fine. I gawked at Joey. Just on this one day, he had faced a bee and a mad mother. So it is the same day as the bee incident, interesting. And here he was, alive and healthy as ever. He gave me the thumbs up sign. See, nothing to it. Then Joey told me to wait in his room. When he came back, he had a hammer, a jar of nails, a bag of cotton balls, a bottle of iodine, and some band-aids. Uh-oh, what do you think he's doing with that? I think I have an idea. Not a good idea. I asked what all that was for. Oh no, put a hole in my ear, he said. I screeched, you're gonna wear an earring? Nope, so why are you putting a hole in your ear? He grinned, pain. If I didn't already know he was loony, I knew it now. I told him, the only thing about you that's turning rat is your brain. So why do you think Joey, he, he wants him to put a hole in the ear, and originally I thought he wanted an earring, which, you know, kind of makes sense. That's why you would want a hole in your ear. But he goes, nope, pain. Why do you think Joey wants to feel pain? What, what do you think that's about? Because that just confuses me. Do you think it's the pain he wants to feel or is there going to be something as a result of the pain? What do you think about that? He ignored me. He cleared a space on his desk. He opened the jar of nails and dumped them out. He rooted through them until he found one he liked, a long, thin one. He handed the nail to me along with the hammer. He got a felt tip pen, went to his mirror and put a dot in the middle of his right earlobe. He came back to the desk, knelt down beside it real close and flapped his lobe out so that it sat like a tiny pancake on the top edge of the desk. I looked at the hammer and nail in my hands. Oh no, I said. I dumped them on the desk and took a seat on the bed. You do it if you're crazy enough. I would, he said, but I can't. Not like this. Come on, just do it. I didn't move. You mind if I ask you a stupid question? Like why you want to hammer a hole in your ear? What do you mean, pain? He pulled his earlobe off the desk. He sat on the floor. You gotta learn to take pain. That's all. No more crybaby. You know, like the Indians used to do. You had to go through stuff, really painful, before you could, could become a man. You had to prove you could do it. I got news for you, I told him. You're not an Indian. He looked at me, disgusted. He grabbed the hammer and held it out. You gonna do it? I shook my head no. Would you do that if your friend asked you to? Would you hammer a hole into his ear? I don't think I would do that for my friend. <laughs> Especially not with a hammer and a nail, right? I mean, I don't know if any of you guys have got your ears pierced, but it is not usually done with a hammer and a nail. Especially if that nail is a little bit rusty. You would not want to be using a nail in your ear. Wait, let's go to the next page. He threw the hammer down. Thanks, pal. Listen, I said, if it means that much to you, why don't you just do some easier kind of pain? Something you don't need a hammer and a nail for. Like what, he said. I thought about it. Well, how about ben bending your finger back? Nah, he said, that's dorky. I thought some more. How about kicking your door with your bare big toe? He didn't like that one either. I got it, I said. I knuckle your head 10 times. Forget it. But now I didn't want to forget it. I was getting into it. I rattled off some more. Pull out a hair. Sit the three thickest volumes of the encyclopedia on your tongue. Sleep all night with erasers up your nose. Wrap your mouth around the doorknob and slam it shut. I was still going when the phone rang. It was pretty late, so we were both surprised when his mother called and said it was for him. He went out. When he came back, he looked innocent. Too innocent. It was her, wasn't it, I said. I told her not to call people so late. I shoved him. Traitor. 
You shoved me back. Listen, Morton, I didn't call her. She called me. What do you guys think that he means by it was her? Who do you think called Joey? Who would Suggs be really mad about calling Joey? I have a feeling it was our friend Judy Billings. Let's see on the next page. I don't know for sure, but that would be my best guess. I just said, and he told whoever was on the phone, you shouldn't call people so late. Or at least that's what Joey told Suds, he said. Took you long enough to hang up. What do you want me to do? Slam down the phone as soon as she said hello? Maybe I want you to lay off her, he laughed. I keep telling you, jerk face, I don't care about her. I ain't chasing her. She's chasing me. You want her to chase you. He threw the pad of tattoos in my face. Do something about it. What do you think he means by that? Can you throw it in the tattoos? Saying, hey, he, she's, I'm not chasing her, she's chasing me. If you want her to chase you, why don't you do something about it? And then gave him tattoos. You think he thinks the tattoos might help jo Judy like him? We glared at each other. Sounds like they're still in a little bit of a fight, especially after Judy called him. They still haven't said it's Judy, but I think we can all assume it was. He turned on the TV. We watched a couple horror movies in silence. We went to bed. When we woke up Saturday morning, I said, okay. He rubbed sleepies from his eyes. Okay, what? What do I do? He sat up. You're ready to be a rat? I shrugged. I guess so, but I don't think I know how. It doesn't come natural to me. So what convinced Suds to finally want to become a rat? It was a girl. It was Judy Billings. No sweat, he said. We just do what all beginners do. What's that? Practice. Wow, interesting. So it sounds like they're kind of making up a little bit because Suds is like, okay, I'll do what I need to do to get Jody Billings to start liking me instead of you. So he's about to become a rat. We will see how far he takes it in the next couple chapters. We will read chapter eight tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow.